We are live. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to get this set up for the comment section. Let's see. And uh, see how many people are going to be joining us. But we are live. Okay. So, welcome to T and Bannock. I'm JD Hawk. And today I'm going to be discussing uh, who inspired me to get back into art. But before we uh, get into that, you know, in the comments, be sure to say hello and let me know where you're from. All right. So who inspired me to get back into art? Well, in order to understand what happened, in order to understand all that, um, you have to keep in mind. Sorry, I'm just losing my place here. There's a. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have to edit this. I just, uh, I'm fairly new, so bear with me. I will edit this. All right, so uh, let's start over. Good morning, and welcome to T and Bannock. I'm JD Hawk. Today, we're going to be talking about who inspired me to get back into art. In the comments, be sure to say hello and let me know where you're from. Um, so who inspired me to get back into art? And to understand that, you have to know there was a period of time where I'd stopped and I didn't think I'd ever create again. I, I had given up. Uh, that was it. I gave up. But let me give you a brief history. Um, it, and with this brief history, you have to keep in mind, like in the background, that I wasn't doing it. I was doing it mostly out of a hobby for a lot of years. And it played an important role in my life. Um, because I've been doing art consistently since I was a little kid. In, uh, one of the stories um, that when I first knew that I had um, a creative side, for example, is I was actually in grade uh, two, I believe it was, grade three. And I know some of my old schoolmates from way back then are probably watching. Um, so I was in grade two and we had this assignment and I don't remember exactly, but it had to do with something where the teacher gave us a piece of paper and there's square boxes on it. And in those square boxes, you had to draw a picture of whatever the word was. So, for example, if it was a spoon, you'd have to draw a spoon, um, stuff like that. And one of the pictures, and it got harder and harder for each, each box that was going down the line. Um, so you'd have to draw a dog, and of course everybody, if you didn't draw a stick dog, it was always a wiener dog, you know, it had that round body, long brown body with a stick and a head and ears and tail, and that was a dog. So you'd look over and everybody's drawing the same thing, and um, I, I noticed I was a little bit more advanced, and at that age, like in grade two, I, uh, I just kind of knew it. And what really hit is when one of the boxes it said to draw a moose. And so I draw, drew a moose's head, you know, with the antlers and the big nose. And uh, I even had that bell that's underneath, underneath the moose's chin. And so, you know, of course, I look over and everybody's still drawing these, like, fat wiener dogs and antlers, stick antlers. And that was their moose. And, you know, I drew a head of a moose. And um, so that, that's when I, I knew that I had something. And it actually runs in the family. So, like, I'm not the only one that was able to uh, be creative this way. I have an uncle. Um, his name is Armand Paquette, and I believe he's 92 years old right now. If you Google his name, uh, you'll see his paintings. They come up. So he's a very famous painter. Um, he's been doing it forever. And, uh, yeah, he has amazing work. Um, there's a book or maybe books, but lots of stuff. Uh, my mom would tell me that my grandma would actually draw pictures on their little paper lunch bags to go to school and of course we I have a couple other uh, relatives that were quite good with um, drawing uh, artistically so that's when I first knew I, I grade two and that moose I'll never forget that uh, I wish I still had that picture um, but so anyway time went on and it, it was about I believe it was about grade five maybe grade six on a, a school uh, excursion we went to the museum and at the time it was called uh, the Museum of Man and Nature. It changed. I think it's just called the Museum of Nature in Winnipeg, Manitoba. 
And we were learning about different things, and there was a soapstone, a little class that was there, and we got to go in there and uh, use some of the tools and use the soapstone, uh, some of the soapstone that was from here in Manitoba. And uh, I don't remember what I made, uh, made, but, you know, just a, a little trinket type thing. And they put a hole in it so you could have, like, a little leather piece and wear it as a necklace. And, um, yeah, I, I don't remember what I made, but I remember the feel of the stone and the soapstone. And thinking, this is incredible. Like, this stone, when you, when you sand it down or file it down, like, it feels like soap. It was, it was the neatest thing. And I was so fascinated by that. That was just incredible. So I went home. And, of course, I told my parents about it, that, uh, you know, hey, hey, we were carving soapstone. And I think my mom misunderstood because she went to, uh, at the time, there was Wolko and Zellers. And so she went to, I think it was Wolko in Garden City um, in Winnipeg. And she bought a bag of, like, you know, 25-cent soaps. And they're all different colors. And uh, so I was carving those soaps. <laughs> and, uh, again, I don't know what I made. But I know at one time, um, at that time, my dad had soap on a rope. I don't remember if you remember that, but soap on a rope was like the coolest thing. Except for a kid, you know, you see the soap uh, hanging on the shower with a rope. Um, so I took it down and carved a canoe out of it and just left the rope there. So I don't think my dad was too happy about that. Um, yeah. So the... Uh, so I, I did a little bit more carving and, of course, always drawing, always coloring and um, stuff like that. And like I said, it, it, was, it was a hobby. You know, my parents, yeah, you know, just let me sit at the kitchen table and do my thing. And then in, in high school, I was introduced to acrylic paints. Wow. I was in the lunchroom every single day. Uh, if I wasn't in art class in the lunchroom painting with acrylic paints, I just loved it. And I got to create some very big paintings. Um, the art teacher was very good to me, uh, very encouraging, very good. Uh, so I, I'm, I do remember one sailboat painting I made. It was quite big, quite big uh, for me at the time. And I showed it to my grandma, and she was very proud of me that she got to see this sailboat painting. It must have been, uh, like I said, it's pretty big. So it's probably about four feet tall. Um, by two feet wide, so it was a large painting. And she made a comment that, that uh, she was critiquing my stuff, and the only mistake I made that she found was in the sky. And uh, she showed me what I did wrong, and of course I learned from that, and uh, I bless her, you know, blessings for her show me that. Um, yeah, so, okay, so after that, you know, I still continue to do my stuff, and then after high school, uh, you know, I, I still have a few acrylic paints, and I'm still painting. And I was doing a lot of caricatures, and I could also paint portraits. And I was self-taught in all that stuff. Um, uh, I never learned how to do it, the, the, the anatomy or portraits in high school or anything like that. That was all just on me learning outside of school. And so I do a lot of caricatures, a few portraits. Uh, and then, so the, this was out of high school. And, you know, I had a different job. I... You know, there was family and friends and other commitments, and so I wasn't doing it a lot, but it was, it was, still, it was still part of me. So I'd do it when I could, um, doing these uh, drawings, whether it was uh, people or landscapes or animals. It, it was something I just had to do, and so I did it. And uh, so as a young adult, um, I thought there's got to be more. i got to learn something. i got to learn more. I've been doing these portraits. i got to learn more. What can I do? So I approached the Winnipeg Art Gallery, and they had classes there. And they had classes on an introduction to oil painting. Then it wasn't how to draw or how to do any of that. You had to know all that stuff. Um, you had to have previous courses, and I thought, well, that's crazy. I don't need previous courses. I already know how to draw. I just want to know how to use oil paints because there's, um, a, it's a different style than acrylics. So I was able to join their introductory course, and I learned oil painting and that just took off. Like, I just loved it. Because it wasn't just about the colors. It was also about the smell and the way it feels on the canvas. Mixing the paints. Um, mixing them with different mediums. It, it Basically, it tickled like all your senses um, for me. So I, I, I just loved it. it was, uh, I loved uh, oil painting. I've stuck with it ever since. So I was still doing some soapstone carvings. 
um, over the years. I did, I did quite a few of them, and they sold. And they actually sold overseas too, to uh, mostly England. They they liked my stuff, so they went over there. Uh, the paintings were mostly just for family and friends, because like I said, it was a hobby, and uh, I did have other commitments, so it was it was it was fun. The portraits got so I was, I was still a young man, younger than what I am. Um, and the portraits really took off. Um, everybody loved the portraits, and not like so. What? I don't know what this. I don't want to brag, but I got so good at portraits I could do it in under two and a half hours, in oil paint. It was a a skill that I had learned. It was a lot of fun. I got to um, meet a lot of people, do these portraits. Okay, so then what happened was life threw me a curveball and I lost a good portion of my stuff uh, then I moved um, you know still I wasn't able to do do painting for a little bit I, I could still do drawing just 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 due to circumstances eventually I was able to regain or re, um, re obtain some more supplies and it was going quite well and at one point, I was doing soapstone carving on an everyday basis. I, I, I was teaching it. Um, it. My art was taking off. It was no longer a hobby. It, no longer a hobby. It was becoming a business. Um, and uh, so that that was a lot of fun. Like I said, the soapstone was amazing um, to deal with. I wasn't doing as many paintings. Um, I, I was still doing a lot of drawings on this on the side, but I was doing a lot of soapstone carving did the teaching and then life uh, didn't just throw me a curveball it threw me down a mountain it uh, I, I ended up losing everything and that really hurt uh, it really stung uh, as far as my art stuff was concerned you know because it was part of me and I would do it I had done it um, I lost, done it for years, so it was always part of me. I, then I had lost um, a big portion of it, which stung, you know, that hurt, and then I regained it. And then uh, I got going again, and I was on this real nice ride with my artwork, and it was gone. And uh, it, it hurt so much that it was like a loss, like a loss of a, um, like a limb. You know, you just, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. it. Just it was it was a real tremendous loss. That in my mind, I thought, you know, I don't ever want to do this again. I don't want to go through that pain of losing something I really loved doing um, because it was so personal. I ended up moving to British Columbia, and there was a, a young First Nations man there, and uh, somebody told him that at one time I used to teach carving. And so he asked me if I could teach him how to do pipestone carving. And pipestone is a, it's a red stone that you get down from south, down south, and it's used by First Nations, uh, you know, for their peace pipes and carvings and stuff like that. And um, so he was a real polite, very respectful young man uh, who had asked me, approached me, and I said, okay, you know what, I will teach you what I can about pipestone carving. And so I... In BC, I was, for a couple of months, I was teaching them, teaching them. And during that time, I, I was still hurting inside. Like, I didn't want to do any of my own stuff. I didn't want to carve my own stuff. I didn't want to draw. I didn't want to paint. Like I, to me, I had lost something that I, I was just too personal. I do not want to go through that again. Like, my own mentality was um, stuck on that. So after a couple months... Um, he, he got quite good at it. He knew what he was doing. Uh, there was not much more I could teach him. And so he just went on his own and was carving pipestone. Uh, yeah, pipestone uh, carvings and uh, the ends for the pipes. And he did quite well. All right, before I go any further, um, let me just see the comments. Ah, Wanumi. Oh, thanks from Uganda. <laughs> Yeah, love you too, bro. That's awesome. Thanks for joining me. I uh, really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Um, okay, let me. I'm just gonna pull up. Uh, let's see. I just a uh, couple notes here because I wanted to share a couple things. Okay, so 
So hello to everybody. You know, leave comments down below. Say hello to me. Tell me where you're from. Let me know who's here. Really appreciate it. Okay, so that was for a few years. A few years have gone by, and I didn't tell anybody. You know, I used to do paintings. I used to do this. Used to do that. Um, like I said, it 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 hurt. I, I was mentally mentally drained, distraught um, from losing something that I really enjoyed doing, and I didn't want to do that again. I didn't want to lose it. Um, so, here's what happened. A few years went by, 2019, my partner and I, we go traveling. We, we jump in my van, and in the van I had converted it into a, a camper. So there was a bed back there, there was a small cupboard, and it had a little kitchenette in it. And so we could just go anywhere we wanted, and stay wherever we wanted. And we decided that we were going to go travel for two months, on the east coast of Canada, uh, in Maritimes. So we went to uh, uh, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia and Cape Breton and uh, so many beautiful places. Neither one of us have been there and it was just amazing uh, experience because it was different than other parts of Canada. Um, the people were really nice. So as we're traveling, uh, we get to Nova Scotia and of course, you know, on the highway, there's all kinds of different uh, point of interest signs. You know, point of interest over there, a point of interest over there. And, you know, we had two months. So we were stopping wherever we could, have a look at different things. And Nova Scotia came. And there was this point of interest sign pointing to uh, a replica house of Maud Lewis. Now, if you don't know who Maude Lewis is, I'm going to put up the links uh, in the comments uh, right after this video for you. But Maude Lewis is a famous Canadian folk artist. Um, she, from 1903, and then she passed away in 1970. There was many documentaries on her. Uh, I've seen them. You know, I wasn't really paying too much attention to them. So I, I knew of her, but I didn't know her. And the replica house that she had lived in most of her life was 10 feet by 9 feet. Could you imagine living in a house that small? And she painted. And on top of that, she had this debilitating disability. The, it was, uh, there was a couple problems, but it was a big part of it was arthritis, where her arms and hands were stuck in a position, and her, so was her head and neck, so she's like this, so you, you'll see pictures of her like, like this, but she's always smiling. And so, as I got to know through this replica house, and um, doing some more research, and we found her gravesite, so we went and paid respects to her, everything about her was amazing because she was nothing, she enjoyed life. Um, she, it was a very hard life, so, so for example, one of the things when when she first was starting out, when she moved out of her parents' house, she walked for 12 kilometers for a job as a housekeeper. Can you imagine, like, even walking one kilometer for a job these days? Like, people are so lazy. Oh, it's too far, it's too far. So she walked 12 kilometers, and the gentleman, Everett, his name was Everett, uh, wanted her to work for him, but she only agreed to uh, clean his house. Like I said, it was only 10, 10 by 6, or 10 by 9, if he would agree to marry her. They ended up getting married. And uh, so that's where they lived. He was a, a fish peddler. So he'd go door to door selling his fish. And she would create these Christmas cards. That's how she started. She'd paint these Christmas cards and she'd sell them with the fish, you know, like for 25 cents. Um, and. Uh, she kept doing that and over the years I believe it was CBC I, I can't remember but one of the news organizations news organizations got wind of this and so they did they interviewed her uh, there are the interviews are all on YouTube you can find them um, her name is Maude Lewis and so it got me thinking that um, you, you had this little woman who had this disability our life painted you know in a tiny space yet she was able to paint 
her joy of life, her attitude and story, it hit me like a ton of bricks because I was made to look deep inside myself. I was so ashamed for feeling sorry for myself all those years when I had no excuse to have that mindset to never paint again. I was, to put it bluntly, an idiot. Those tons of bricks that Maude threw at me was the best thing ever happened to me as far as making me rethink my attitude and thinking about my position, thinking about my painting. Um, I was I was stupid. Like, I really was. I had this gift and I stopped doing it because I was hurt. And that's okay. It's okay to be hurt sometimes. But I had this gift. And to stop it, that was really dumb on my part. So, you know, Maude Lewis, she is a huge inspiration for who she is, for how she lived, um, and how she continued to live. All her paintings are nothing but joy. So I recommend you get to, recommend you watch these videos. There's even, there was a movie done about her. It's called Maudie. Yeah, um, Ethan Hawkins, Hawkins uh, was in it. Um, so you can Google that. Uh, yeah, it was called Maudie. Um, but she inspired me and lit that spark I needed in Nova Scotia. And so, you know, I looked over at my partner and, you know, I, I said, this is dumb. I, I, I got to get back to it. Um, of course, at the time, my partner, she uh, had not really seen what I was capable of doing. Because um, that was something that was still hurting inside. I didn't want to share too much about it, about my artwork and blah, blah, blah. So anyway... Uh, we got back, we, we traveled, we traveled uh, for those two months. We finally got back to Winnipeg. And one of the first things I did was uh, order online and go to the art store, get a few supplies, start practicing again. Um, yeah, uh, so I have to say a big thank you to Maude Lewis for inspiring me to get back into artwork. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be creating today. And I would not have the blessings I've had over the past couple of years with my artwork. Um, if you've been following me, you know I've, I've done a, a few amazing projects. Um, my, my art stuff has been seen almost everywhere in Canada now. Uh, and I, I have to thank Maude Luz and her story for helping me, you know, rethink my attitude um, and look deep inside myself. So, yes, that's who inspired me, Maude Lewis. Uh, if anybody else has any stories like that they want to share in the comments, I'd love to hear who inspired you, um, where you're from. Uh, yeah, so I'm definitely open for questions. That, as uh, some of you say hello and, and uh, maybe give me some questions here, I'm going to put in the comments, I just have to find my paperwork here, I'm going to put in the comments um, in links to Maude Lewis. Um, let me see. So here's one. Let me, uh, and then I will get to your questions. Let me just, I, I got, uh, I have four links I want to put up here. There's the first one. Here comes the second one. So look in the comments. Look in the comments. There's a second one. And let's do, oh, this one was from CBC from November 25th. 1965 and it is right there and of course I have one more video and this one was done uh, where was this one done this is from the film board Canada film board <clears throat> let me see oh I lost it Okay, so there they are, and now let me see. I see a couple people wrote a couple stuff here. Um, so let me see. Hello, everybody. Hi, Linda, Don, Tannis, uh, uh, Sherry. Hello, Linda, uh, Don. Do you did you do any painting while in the maritime? You know what? No, I didn't. Um, I, I was still in that mindset, um, and I didn't really have any art any supplies with me. 
because I hadn't painted for a few years. Um, so when I was, in, I, like I said, I didn't even expect to come across Maude Lewis. It was just a, like a fluke, a chance. We're traveling, having a good time, going sightseeing. Um, you know, we saw these point of interest signs for Maude Lewis and her tiny house. So, you know, it was a sightseeing thing more than anything. But when I learned about her, yeah, that's when it hit me. It, it hit me hard, um, deep inside myself, uh, you know, my soul. So it wasn't until I got back when I started drawing. And I started with colored pencils first. I, I bought some colored pencils uh, just to get my mind back into that time frame of, um, or not that time frame, get back into that mindset of being able to draw again. Because drawing, it deals with um, perspective, uh, shadows, lights. And so, because I hadn't done it for a couple of years, I wanted to make sure I was still able to do it before I get back into painting. So I did the pencil crayons and then I ordered some paints and some canvases. And it, yeah, it just, it took off from there. Uh, I was, I dove right into it uh, for lost time. And because my Lewis basically, she kicked my butt. And so that's what happened. Hope that answers your, happens, uh, answers your question, Don. Thank you so much. Um, Sherry, did you see Maude Luce's display at the museum in Halifax? Loved it. I did not. Um, you know, I had no idea that her house, her actual house, so it's 10.6 feet by 9 feet, and it fits inside the museum in Halifax. So we didn't get to see it, but I know it's there. Yeah, um, and the we only got to see the replica in Digby, Nova Scotia. But yeah, we when we're out that way, we will go to the Halifax Museum just to see it. Pay our respects, because uh, it meant a lot uh, just to see her. Good morning, Kenneth. Glad you're here. Uh, yeah, so, so as you can see, uh, Maude Lewis had a huge impact on my art career. Um, her style is uh, very simple. There's no shadows. Uh, it, it's not something, you know, I would do. Uh, um, but she had a great impact in Canadian art itself. Uh, so good for her, good for her attitude. Um, yeah, so she passed away in 1970. I believe it was in June of 1970. And then her husband, Everett, um, he, he passed away, I think, four or five years later in Digby, Digby Nova Scotia. But uh, yeah, a lot of documentaries on them. Yeah. I, I can't say enough about how much Maude Lewis changed me. Uh, it, yeah. I'm not sure what else to tell you guys. Uh, but that's who inspired me. And uh, it's, it's been a, an amazing ride with uh, all the stuff I've been able to do because of that. So let's see if there's any more comments. Uh, I just want to say good morning to everybody. Thank you so much for showing up, showing up in the comments there. Got a couple people watching. That's awesome. Uh, what else can I talk about? Maybe we can revisit something I've quickly mentioned previously. Uh, so let's see. So originally, well, we can start with originally I was, uh, you know, from Winnipeg. Um, so that's where I was born and raised. I ended up uh, doing a lot of soapstone carving teaching in Alberta. And then from Alberta, I went to BC. Um... So actually, the part of my story is going to be in an upcoming book towards the end of November. Uh, I mentioned it before, and so there's a book that's coming out on people uh, that are in are inspirational, and it was first started by uh, my friend named Jana Dutton, uh, who lives in Saskatchewan, and so each chapter is dedicated to someone she found inspiring, and so part of my story of uh, how I lost everything the, la the last time. Um, it starts with that story and it progresses to where I am today. So we will get more into that for sure. Uh, Don, did you go back to soapstone carving? You, you know what? I, I tried to get back into it. I'd love to do it. I just don't have the space for it. Um, I know, like, Maude Lewis didn't have any space. So the thing with soapstone carving is that it's very dusty. 
Uh, so I tried getting back into it, but the dust kept getting all over the place, and I had to stop. It was just making too much of a mess. It was, uh, you know, it can get, it floats, so it can float into the kitchen, so you, you could have a piece of toast, but you're eating soapstone dust on top of it. Um, it gets on my paintings, so I, I have to do it outside. I live in an apartment, and I, I can't carry all that stuff all my tools plus the soapstone outside. Um, I think as you know, like I, I do have back issues that prevent me from doing a, a few things now. Um, I'm kind of vulnerable that way. I would love to do it if I could find a, you know, a, a garage or I can get my own house, you know, then, then I could do it during the summer months. You can't do it during the winter months because it's just too cold on the hands and the stone gets really hard to carve. So you gotta do it during the summer months. All right. Um, oh wow, so, alright, so my partner wants me to show you she made a tuna sandwich with the bannock. <laughs> no, whoa, you guys almost ate it. <laughs> Let me just have a sip of my, my tea, and I'll show you one of the mugs of my paintings. My, that's one of my paintings on the mug. Of course, you uh, can order those through my website. Um... Yeah, it's bannock and tea time and conversations. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. yeah, you guys are laughing. Almost ate the almost ate the bannock tuna sandwich. <laughs> uh, so let's see. We can. Uh, yeah, we're live. You know, it's only nine thirty. I still got. Uh, I still got half an hour to answer any other questions you have. If you want to talk about something else, you know, mention in the comments. Absolutely, let's uh, have a discussion on whatever. Um, I can tell you about a couple of projects I have coming up. I do have a wall mural with uh, one of my paintings uh, that will be going up on a wall mural in downtown Winnipeg at one of the buildings. I don't start that till uh, I think end of November. The date hasn't been set. Hi, Tammy. Thanks for coming in. Um, so the wall mural, yeah, end of November. Uh, I have another project. Oh, the book project, which I just mentioned. It's not supposed to be coming out, too. I do have um, a, another surprise project I'm working on, but I can't reveal it until 2023. Um, but it's also uh, another blessing to have be part of. So I'm pretty excited about that one. I can't wait to share that. Uh, those are the main ones. As far as what I'm working on, uh, I ha I am working on, on the side, besides those projects, my own personal stuff. I'm working on one, two, th uh, three paintings. Um, one of them is a, a portrait of an elder uh, Métis gentleman. Um, we just did a photo shoot with him. So I, I got the photos and I'm going through them and trying to pick out the best one and I'll be painting. Yeah. And his painting is actually has a, he's wearing an old, it was made in the late 1800s, early 1900s from the Hudson Bay. His uncle had made a, um, a hide. I, I don't know. It might be elk, it might be an elk hide jacket and mitts that are beaded like the Métis beaded vest. So the mitts are beaded, his jacket, um, his jacket's not beaded, but it, it's made uh, like fancy for that time period. And so he's wearing it. He's an, uh, he got it from his uncle. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to get painting on that one. That's, uh, that's going to be a nice painting. The other painting, I'm doing a portrait also. And this portrait is uh, like the long, it's like it's long, it's not uh, f fat or wide or it's long. And that one is actually a portrait of me um, standing near a bunch of trees. Uh, in in my vest and my my um, this sash, uh, it's more for you know personal reasons. I just wanted to do something like that. And the third oil paint that I'm working on has the the Métis sash in it, um, with uh, a shell and some sage and some smoke, and it has to do with um, spirituality. Smudging. And smudge, yeah, smudging. Um, I'm so jealous. She's eating bannock in front of me. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yes. So that's that. 
let's see what else uh there's other projects i want i do want to work on i there's some other portraits i've been promising people you know for over a year now but as most people know last year i had a, a spine back injury and it prevented me from doing a lot of stuff for several months um and now that i'm back into the swing of things i can start getting doing that kind of stuff so i got some couple portraits uh let's see what else do i got going like that's not enough like really <laughs> i love it i love it uh, yeah so if you're still there still watching yeah maybe i could end this early um because i don't i don't know what else to tell you uh let's see yeah i'm i'm sorry talk to me I got people watching. Ask me some questions. Ask me something. Uh, I, I did put the links for Maud Lewis in there, so have a look at Maud. You can see her there. Um, let's see if I can. Let me try an experiment here. I want to try to bring up um, a picture of Maud Lewis up on my screen, and I want to see if I can share it with you because I haven't done this before. So I just. Let's see. Um, okay, so there's Maud Lewis. Okay, let me see if I can share my screen with you. Um, how do I share my screen? Well, I saw the button earlier, now I don't see it. Events, 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 events. Um, oh, I apologize. There was a button there earlier that says share screen. Now I can't find it. It's going to show you a picture of Maude Lewis, but there are... Uh, I, I put the links in there so you can have a look for sure. Let's see. Uh, yeah, she was a, a an incredible lady. Uh, just her whole attitude, just amazing. You always full of joy, like and just like to paint. Very humble. Um, all for the situation that she was in. She. Uh, yeah, painted her joy. It was uh, it's very touching, very moving, and like I said, it made me rethink, you know, my whole attitude towards myself. Um, yeah. Actually, that is kind of an interesting point. Um, which also makes you think like a lot of people saw her a certain way you know they they couldn't get past this small house and this disability she had uh, her physical appearance and the thing is when you look beyond that she is so full of joy she didn't care um, she didn't let that affect her how other people saw her because she saw herself for who she is. Not an amazing woman. Uh, yes. Um, Dawn, those people are angels. Absolutely. Thank you for commenting. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me uh, just consult my business partner. You know. What else should I talk about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's still eating her bannock. I'm so jealous. Yeah, does anybody have a good bannock recipe they can share? I'll have to get hers. Uh, well, if there's, if there's no more questions, you know, I, I pretty much said what I wanted to say, you know, the whole, uh, how my attitude changed, you know, from losing everything to being inspired, uh, by pure chance, I came across her, and uh, it's been a, a life-changing experience for me and my art, and even my whole attitude, you know, I look at things differently now, not not just my attitude towards the art, what had happened, but even just in everyday life, like, I look at things differently, thanks to her, uh, it's, uh, it's been a good ride. It's been an amazing and blessed ride. I'm 
so grateful. And I think I will end it there. I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for commenting. Uh, I'm still going to be around, but I'm going to end the video. If you have any more questions, please post them there, and I will chat with you online. And for the next video, uh, I will figure out what to talk about. All right? All right. Have an incredible day, everybody. Thank you, Tammy. You too. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Keep smiling. Have a good one.